Now let's look at a forward propagation example, and we'll show how it connects to back propagation in a few minutes. Without recurrence, it's actually a pretty easy proposition. It's just basically taking the inputs that we have at the bottom layer and forward propagating them all the way through the network. So let's take a look at this example here. We've got two inputs, x1 and x2, having negative 2 and negative 1. And we have the current weights for those two as negative 3 and negative 2. We also, of course, have a bias, which is denoted as our x0, which has a fixed value of 1 but we're tuning the weights for the bias as theta zero, which here is negative three. What we want to do is calculate the activation function, which is first the signal, that's just the aggregation of all of the weights times the inputs. This is our linear unit. And then putting that through a specific function. Here we've chosen the sigmoid, right? So this is our G function that we're going to apply to our signal. And that's going to be output as a function of the weights plus all of the inputs there. And that's going to be the output uh, x that we're denoting for the next layer. And the next layer will be an x because it is also an input to a further layer that's upstream. So let's go ahead and compute that, shall we? We can do so on this graph here, which is basically the same thing that we've shown but envisioned as calculations as part of a computational graph. We've taken the sigmoid function here and we've expanded it out in several separate nodes that we're adding together to achieve the composite effect. So what we can do is start by looking at this part in the red dotted outlines which represents the aggregation of the signal in the parentheses. And see we've taken the weight of the bias term and just multiplied it against the bias to get our negative 3. So what do you think the rest of the network will look like? Well let's see. We're going to take this weight, multiply it by this one and get a positive 6. Then multiply this weight for the second input times the input itself and get a negative 2. And then we're just going to apply the operation that's inside of the computation graph. Here it's a plot. We're going to take 6 plus minus 2 and get 4. And we have our minus 3 up here and our 4 adding that together to get 1. We apply the negative which is here in the operation. We need to take the exponent as indicated here. You pull out your calculator that's going to come out to 0.37. I'm going to add 1. 1.37 and finally take its reciprocal. And now we've gotten the output. This is our output for this activation function for this basic linear unit that's using the sigmoid function for the calculation. So this will be the upstream value of x for the next layer. 